Hey folks, my name's Ed Trevers, my pronouns are he, him, and his. I'm an Anglican priest serving in the beautiful parish of St. Margaret of Scotland that sits on the ancestral and on the unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. Gwe. I don't know if you heard this, but the other day Will Smith slapped Chris Rock at the, uh, at the Academy Awards in front of like a gazillion people watching from home on television because Chris Rock was making some really lazy jokes about Will Smith's wife, Jada Pinkett Smith. I know, that's right, crazy. If you haven't seen it, well, if you haven't seen it, I, I don't know what rock you've been under, but it's everywhere. This is all over the news. Everybody has an opinion about this. Every talk show host has a joke or 104 jokes about this. Every person on Twitter and Facebook has an opinion about this. Some are on Team Rock, some are on Team Smith. Some blame Will, shouldn't do it. Some blame Chris Rock, shouldn't have said it. Some blame Jada Pinkett Smith. She looked at Will the wrong way. It's wild. I mean, they're interviewing, they're interviewing Will Smith's mom. What did you think about him slapping Chris Rock? It's out of control. That moment, that slap has become a beast onto itself, a creature of its own design. Will Smith responded to violence with violence. And he unleashed chaos. When he, when he let violence loose, he lost all control of what would transpire over the next few days, few weeks. As a matter of fact, perhaps over his, the course of his career. He probably will never, ever be rid of this moment. It's not like some gaffe that, oh, well, yeah, ha, ha. He'll probably be reminded of this for the rest of his life. Comedians on the road will respond to this as a Will Smith. When they're heckled, are you going to pull a Will Smith? When somebody stands up and walks out, oh, no, he's going to pull a Will Smith. He'll be a meme. And not a good, funny meme that makes us belly laugh, but a meme that is meant to destroy a character. We have a choice when we have a moment like this. We have a choice to respond in a loving way or we, to respond with violence in a hurtful way. When we respond with violence, we unleash chaos. We have no control over which way it goes. Violence does not serve us. Violence is something that is there, it's in our tool belt, and we can let it loose at any point. But when we let it loose, we let it loose. It goes where it pleases, it does what it pleases, and it creates a cascade effect throughout our lives and throughout the lives of most of the people around us. But when we respond in love, love is ours to control. Love is our servant. It's there with us. Yes, it sometimes does cascade, but never in ways that we would be afraid of. When we let love loose, we let truth loose, kindness loose, gentleness loose. Empathy, loose. And again, most of us saw or have seen Smith listening to these jokes, laughing along with everybody else in the auditorium, and then get up, walk up to the stage, and smack Chris Rock. Go back to his seat, and then roar back at Chris Rock, demanding that he behave in a certain way. He committed an act of violence, followed with 
another act of violence, demanding that someone live, say, do as he instructs. Now, he did this in response to Chris Rock's act of violence. Now, you might say, well, a joke's not an act of violence. A joke isn't an act of violence. What that was, was an engine to generate laughter at the expense of someone else. Somebody else's feelings really doesn't make a difference if Chris Rock knew about Jada Pickett Smith's alopecia. It doesn't make a difference at all. He made a choice to drag her in and to make fun of her. And the audience, the audience there in the auditorium, all laughed along with these jokes. They affirmed that what he was saying and how he was saying it was okay. It was good. It was entertaining. It was everything they want. Give us more. Some of those people may have been laughing because they genuinely thought he was funny. Some of those people were probably laughing, thankful, in an emotional release, thankful that, well, he wasn't making fun of them. And so Smith responded with violence. Now, the truth is, if Chris Rock chooses, he could have charges pressed. Should he choose, he could sue. I can't imagine what he, the amount that he could seek as compensation. But this could be so much more horrific than it already is for the Smith family. Because he let violence loose. But what if he had let love loose? What if he had chosen to respond to Chris Rock's hurtful, lazy jokes in a loving way? What if instead of the camera zooming in on him, walking up those steps and slapping Rock, what if the camera instead had followed him walking up those steps, hugging Chris Rock, and whispering something in his ear. Something that you find out later was, you've really hurt her. And in the, with that hug and with that whisper, Rock stops dead and changes directions and goes about doing the job he was supposed to do. What if, instead of the camera following Will Smith up to slap Chris Rock? What if instead the camera turned over to where the Smiths were sitting? And what you saw was Will Smith kneeling beside his wife, hugging her, holding her, telling her he loves her, telling her he's proud of her, telling her that she's safe, telling her that she's beautiful, telling her that He's glad they work things out because he's thankful that he's there in this moment with her. That it doesn't matter what anybody has to say. It doesn't matter how these people around them are laughing. This is going to be their moment, their night. How does that change the narrative? How does that change the conversation that's being had now three, four, five days after the slap heard around the world? What if, instead of following Smith up those steps to slap Chris Rock, instead, no, you see Smith get up. Right? The camera pans over, you see Smith get up. Take his wife by the hand. And the two of them walk out of the theater together. Because this was about protecting her. This slap was about protecting his wife. You can protect somebody by removing them from a situation that is harmful. And in this moment, he is saying, you know what? I don't care about this award. I don't care that my name might be called as the winner of something that I've worked my life for. Because right now, all I care about is making sure that my wife 
is safe. And my wife is away from harmful people. How does that change the narrative two, three, four, five, six days later? What is it that he's now remembered for? When we let violence loose, we have no ability to control how things will fall into place. When we let love loose, in all fairness, we have no ability to control how things are going to fall into place. But when we let love loose, we're never worried about where those chips may end up. We're never worried about the cascading effects of love because it's generally positive. But when we respond with violence, we do have to worry about where those chips fall because more often than not, violence leads to more violence. Hurt people lead to more hurt people, to more hurt people, which leads to more violence. So on and so on and so on. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord's face be made to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord's countenance be lifted up to you. May you always know the peace of being in the Lord's presence. I pray that when we face moments like this, when we face similar moments, we'll have that, that space. We'll have that space where we can choose how we will react, how we will respond. And that our response will be a loving one kind one, a gentle one. Because as Will Smith said, there is no place for violence in a loving world. Amen. Nemultus.